This is the Mohead Y'all Show, showcasing the newest and oldest beer style. Heady conversations. Behind the scenes clips. And subscriber exclusives. Do you like craft beer? We, we do, do too. too. I'm Ann Million Blair. And I'm Deacon Brother Trent. Get ready to pour, pour heavy. heavy. Oh, hey, what's up, Brother Trent? What's up, dude? <laughs> Damn, I think it's a Thursday. It is a Thursday. A and school day. It's a school day, and I got beers, and we in a spot, and... We at the, the creek, the Cedar Creeks. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we might be, I don't know, maybe brewing a beer today. I have no idea. We might be brewing a beer today with <laughs> our friends, and our friends are sitting over here on the side. Who we have over here? <laughs> To, to, to the left. It's to Kelsey. The left, to the left. To from the left. OHAP. Mm, in the heezy. And? I'm Bryce. <laughs> hi, Bryce. Hi, Bryce. Everybody say, everybody say hi, Bryce. Hi, hi Bryce. Bryce. I'm the owner and brewer at Cedar Creek. Yeah, yeah. The mastermind. The mastermind. And I don't know about the mastermind. I think he's sitting. Man, just, just roll with it. Who is who is next to you actually? Hi, y'all. No, I'm Brandon. So Cedar Creek and Ohio. Let's go, Brandon. Uh, oh, did it, that, that oh. just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. I'm Dark Brandon. Wait, no, I'm not. Dark Brandon. He's the antimatter Brandon. <laughs> I was going to say, Kel don't lie, Kelsey also is not just Ohab. Kelsey is the, the, the queen, the bestest of the rest of us. Yeah. Aww. At Cedar Creek. We missed her, though. She was she was gone for a while. So. You were doing, you and Kevin were doing the, the tour thing. To, tour, to yeah. Euro, tour to Euro beer. That's right. Yes. You, you were out there getting pints. You was yeah. out <laughs> there. You was out yeah, <laughs> having a pint yeah. and, or two or three or four or five. I was getting the Imperial, Imperial pints. Pints. Hourly. <laughs> She said the Imperial Pines. The 20, 20 ounce, ounce, baby. That's right. I mean, and she might and have a stein, stein in front of her right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's the only one with the stein. She's still in vacay mode. <laughs> she's still in vacay mode. Look at her. Going hard in the paint. That's I right. ain't mad at you, Kelsey. I got to practice for the stein holding. Ooh, Monday. look at her. Oh, I'm off the glass. I know. Off, you oh. can't do that. So in, in the thing, you can't do that. You have to. Oh, you can't I thumb it. You have to. You have to fist it the arm. whole time. Got to fist it. You can't use the thumb. You got to use the whole well, hand. Got to straight arm it too. You can't All right, straight arm fisting. Yep. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I see how you guys do it here at the creek. Hey, Jesus listen, Christ! Right. Holy <laughs> smokes, man! So what about the creek? What about the creek? What is not about the creek? I mean, they've got everything going. On. Everything. Y'all got everything at the creek. Yeah. Everything. You got wine, liquor, beer. I mean, what don't cigars. you have? Cigars. cigars. I mean, what Food. don't you have besides, besides mead? What don't you have? Oh. Cider. Cider. We right. don't have cider. Right. We will not cider, cider and mead. So, I mean, no, never? No. No, never? Uh, not here. Not here. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Licensing. We'll put it that way. Oh, fair enough. The government. Damn it. Always the government. Always the gov. <laughs> oh. Indiana government, of all things. Always <laughs> the government. <laughs> in our own <honey> picture, <laughs> so we so we know a little bit about we know a little bit about Kelsey, but yep. we don't know we don't know too much about these two cats over here. Yep. So, what's some origin stories with these cats over here? Like, let's let's start out with you, Bryce, and you can grab the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah just pull it, pull it, pull it. What, what, what about me? What about you? What about, what about you, me? Dude? Come on, you tell us. I mean, where do you want me to start? Uh, okay, um, he was let's a just do. Boy let's, who just, liked tennis. Let, let's, <laughs> let's just do that average. Uh, what what got you into doing this whole thing? Oh man, well no, for one, it's not money. It's never money. It can't, be money. can't make money doing this. That's right. Um, so it's love. Well, so <laughs> I. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> what make, what got me into it? Uh, my parents had opened the winery and my dad and I had built what's out here and just daily work in the front wine tasting room a lot of people coming in saying you know their better half was at home because they enjoyed beer or they were just sitting out in the car and you know I met my wife or now wife and we enjoy going to breweries and it's like you know what why don't we do why don't we have beer here we have wine why why are we just 
letting customers or potential sales walk out the door. And we kind of did it backwards. We got the permits, we got <laughs> the equipment, and, and said, well, shit, I guess we need to figure out how to make beer. So that's kind of how we got started. Bryce, yeah. what was it like working like working side by side with your dad? I, I just came back from Michigan. You, me and my dad was working side by side, so you know, not in a thing like this. But. Yeah. He's done that for years. Yeah, I had, we had done that for a while. Yeah. Uh, we used to build custom homes. So No shit, man. So they built this place, like, physically. Yeah, no we, shit. Yeah. With oh. your own two hands and some and a hammer and some oh, nails. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, working together, it's fun. It was difficult at times because he knows what he wants, and I, I'm younger. I have newer ideas and how things should be. Right. But, you know, it all worked out. Obviously. So, but yeah. Did you enjoy that time? I mean, just like side-by-side side camaraderie, man-to-man, yeah. man, dad and son, Nails and, and you know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, mo- most days. Yeah, occasionally the injury, the pass load would have a double hit and you'd send a nail through your finger, but. <laughs> that's, that's true dad should, right? Put a nail straight through your finger, It is what it is. Just grab a hammer and pull it out. That's right. <laughs> and just lick your wounds and keep going. Well, how'd you learn? How'd you learn all of the uh, the skills of building and whatnot? I mean, where where did that come from? Uh, that's what my dad had done straight from high school. So just working with him as a little kid. Got it. You know, I oh shoot, three or four years old, I'd be climbing, you know, bare bone houses with just the framing, climbing up, getting up on the roof with them, and yeah, just doing that and. I don't know. It just kind of became natural and building and understanding how things are. Word up, word up. It's like oh. Legos, but a little bit more. Adult Legos. Yeah, adult Legos. Right, like real life Legos. Yep. Right. So uh, you started doing real life Legos, and then what made you do? What made what made you want to brew? Besides. The other halves have to be outside in the cars and shit. Was there was there another reason why you really wanted to brew besides that? Yeah, I mean, there was some things that had happened, and I wanted to enjoy beer from a different perspective. Okay, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, and for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what was what was the the one beer in the beginning that you were just like, aha, that's that's what that's why I want to do this. Um, so growing up, I never enjoyed carbonated beverages. And then once I turned 21, started going to Bloomington. And I remember we were at Kilroy's mm-hmm. on Kirkwood. The infamous mm-hmm. Kilroy. The infamous yeah. Kilroy. And there was a beer from Upland called Bad Elmer's Porter. Oh, Bad and, Elmer's. And I had had, like, a, you know, a couple Bud Lights, which, again, I didn't like carbonated beverages, but it's like, man, this tastes pretty good. And we had gotten there about 7 o'clock in the evening to start the night, and I think by 9 o'clock I was being carried back to the, to the uh, not dorm room, but the apartment, because it wasn't your typical beer <laughs> yeah and it got me you learned it and that's never it's like you know what i think i enjoy beer yeah <sighs> and that was like right when everything was going on where we had the winery and you know, i wanted to enjoy beer from a different perspective and create things and ah. i would say bad elmer's is kind of what started it that's why ah, bad that's elmer is bad <laughs> he's a bad boy he's a bad man that's great well, that's okay. So you go from that to Bad Elmer's to doing Cedar Creek. So, yeah. what? How did you learn how to brew? Um. Well, I helped out at a brewery in a town down the road, cleaning kegs and jumping in, helping them bottle. Why did you do, do that? Why did Why did you put yourself through that pain? That's, that's an interesting. You, you got to learn. You have to now. want okay. it. You the have to brewer, want it, right? Okay, that's time. what I was right. getting yeah. to. Okay, yep. you wanted it. Yeah, the head brewer at the time uh, lived. Actually, still now, he lives three doors down from my father-in-law in Greenwood, and I was helping my father-in-law landscape. He he saw I had an empty trailer and asked to haul some shrubs away. Hey, and he told me, you know, I can pay in you know, money, beer, kegs, cases. I said, now pay me in knowledge. He goes, Word. all right, here's Word. my number. That's Come down. And 
I kind of helped in for a year, year and a half, two years. Didn't get paid or anything, but you know, I learned with knowledge. I mean, you were getting paid in one and, way or another, right? Yes, and yeah, one hundred percent. And hopefully, one day it'll pay off here. I mean, I think it already has. So, but so. yeah. All right. Well, you get to uh, get, get to it, and get, we'll get see to you doing soon. What you get wanna, to doing. I want to make sure that this isn't going to boil yep, over. Yep, you do it. Do I'll your be, thing, I'll be right man. Back. That's right. Yeah, we'll circle around <laughs> we'll the table. We'll circle around. We've got our circle around the table. Brandon. Brandon. Hi. Hey, what's no. up, dude? Hello. How are y'all doing? We We're chilling. doing great. We chilling, man. Right. You brought out some bangers. You got oh, us man. feeling right, yes. right yes. now. We, we, try, we try and roll. We roll hard from the start, kids. Yeah, you took care of us. Got the so you know, Hubbard. We was we, what we got down at what like eight o'clock or eight thirty. Eight something. Eight thirty four. Thir- my man, he's on that precise time. Eight thirty four. We got to start. This ain't no nine to five job. You got to start right. early. Come That's on, right? Because if Valley uh, Power ain't here, me and the homeboy had to to take off to go work. From our job, so if we're gonna yeah. do it, we're if we're on do PTO it. for a day, we're gonna roll hard. That's all right, day. my man. Hell, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So you're, everyone's probably wondering what what are we doing at Cedar Creek? Why are we at Cedar Creek Camp? Bruh, well, first of all, why we <laughs> why Spock? Why? Well, because we get down with Cedar Creek, right? You right. know, we get down with the home. Because okay. you love Kelsey, don't lie. I mean, you love hey, Kelsey. what's not to love about Kelsey, right? Mm-hmm. So, first of all... That angelic get... face of hers. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're here for that. How about this? Cheers to Kelsey, y'all. Oh, oh cheers oh, to Kelsey. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah, there we Clank. Oh. 100%. Ghost clank for brains. 100%. Yeah, you know, and, and and shout out, you know, every time we show up, you know, Kelsey's always like treating us good and all that. So, you know, all, all that. But we got here early in the morning because there was some beer brewing. Possibly our beer collaboration with the Creek. It might be a collab. Maybe. We might have talked know. about it in the last podcast. Know. We were there dropping some Easter going eggs. Down. It might be Who something knows? going down. <laughs> if you keep your eyes peeled, you'll find out, y'all. Yes, indeed. So y'all need to just keep watching right. and listening, and y'all will find yeah. out. So, Brandon, what do you do here at the Creek? So my technical title is I'm the assistant brewer for Cedar Creek. Indeed. So, yeah. You might have a Cedar Creek brewer shirt Maybe. on. One of the legacies. I was going to say, I think Kelsey might own one of the only other ones of this shirt. What? Limited edition. No, yeah. That, there was only like The collector's ever, edition. Oh, yeah. There was only like 10 or 12 of these ever made. Mm. What? Yeah, I had these made. Oh. oh okay. Gee. Bryce has one, I think. I don't know if he'll knit to it, though. So where did the other ones go? Uh, they weren't some like friends of ours over the years. I think my wife still has one, things like that. So, so your wife is your friend. That's a good thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> mo- 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 how, about, how about this? Most days. Most days. Uh, most days she's my friend. Most days she's my friend. So yeah, we we good there. But yeah. Right on. But, yeah. No. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm the assistant brewer here. Uh, Bryce joked about it, but do a lot of the recipe development, process control, sanitation, all that kind of crap. I, so. I think you were uh, the the mastermind behind the darkest achievement. Yep, it's one of my babies. Ooh, dun, one dun, of my many dun. babies. Yep. Yeah. Tell us about that, yeah, man, because real. that's a thing. Is that what darkest achievement day is coming up kind of soon? Yeah, uh, right? December. It'll be in December. Yep. So it's oh, so it used to be when we first started, it was the darkest day of the year every year. Didn't matter if it was a weekday, but it started becoming enough of an event. We don't want to disappoint people. And people start buying it for the holidays now. So I think, Kelsey, forgive me. I was going to say, I think just looking at the calendar, it looks like it'll probably be December 16th this year, I would guess. Cause it'll, so the darkest day of the year is December 21st, so we always go the weekend prior. So it looks like it'll be December 16th. That's when we drop that beer. So they can celebrate darkness with darkness. Yes, indeed. Right. So yes, I indeed. guess you guys heard it first, and I guess Mohead, y'all yeah, will be truly. here on the... We will be we'll here. Be here. Yes. Yeah, it's, we'll be it's here ridiculous. That. We yep. usually... We've started seeing two to 300 people showing up for that day. It's Shut a blast. Up. It's an And especially in the winter, because you normally see, like... You'll see things along lines of, you know, obviously we're nowhere near like Dark Lord Day or anything like that crap, but not yet. Where, where do you see a day in the middle of winter around Christmas where we're going to be like, hey, let's get a bunch of beer nerds together and start drinking, you know, at eight thirty four in the, the morning, morning. Exactly. right? Yeah, in the middle yeah. of BFE, right. Indiana. I think that's better than Dark Lord Day in my opinion. So a lot cooler, 
That's for sure. As in the yeah. sense of it's not you're not, not going to roast your ass off. That's a nice part. So what was what why why darkest achievement? What was the genesis of it? What what's the origin the story of darkest? Yeah. Oh, Sonic. Mm. Where you at, Sonic? <laughs> yeah. So the big thing was is that I've always been a big proponent of big, huge, dark beers. I heard a rumor about that. Yeah. I love my stouts. I love my porters. And I love, you know, that thick, huge, you know, roasty notes to it. I also like bourbon. So, you know, so great combination. Bourbon barrel stouts, especially. Um, it was one of those things. We really didn't have anything in our profile mm-hmm. that lined up with that. And I was able to luckily convince Bryce. I was like, hey, let's take a chance on this. So the first year, it was a straight. Did you have to arm wrestle him? Did you have to, like, pin him? I mean, uh, give him a, a flying elbow. I mean, you know, it was, you know, it was off the turnbuckle, and we had to call it. But Word. But at the same time, it really was one of those things of he, Bryce truly has been gracious enough to let me have a lot of creative freedom here. And I mean that. Like, if I look at him and go, hey, you know, we we have a great example. We've got a beer sitting in the fermenter right now. He's like, I don't even know what style this is, but you know, you think you think it'll be good. He's like, you you've done a great job with our portfolio and with what we brew here. So, I told him, I said, Hey, look, I said this is the kind of stuff I like. I've been working on some stuff on the side. I really think I can come up with a you know, leading class stout. Let let just give me a chance. Let me try this. He's like, Let's run with it. And it's it is a risk. These beers are huge. They're very expensive. They're very yes. time-consuming. It yes. takes months in the barrel. So yes. uh, props to him for giving me the trust to play with it. 100%. But yep. it's become a thing now. I mean, 2018 is the first year we started doing bourbon barrel aging. So this is our fifth year this year of doing the bourbon barrel aged stout. And every year since, what we've started doing is different little nuances. We start doing uh, what we call variants, where it's you know the vanilla bean, the peanut butter. Last year, we did a one-off, the Neapolitan. We did a really hardcore limited beer that was called Wake Me Up, which was hazelnut, coffee, and dark chocolate added to it in a Russian Imperial. But the whole concept behind it, and at the end of the day, it all boils down to, to be blunt, I really love great barrel-aged stouts. And I was like, look, I think we can do that. I think we can do that here, and I think we can make it a thing. And it has constantly grown since then. I mean, it's when we do the release, we keep kegs back from years past. So you can get... You can get, I think we'll be at this year, a five-year vertical. Nice. Where it will be a five-year Dang. bourbon barrel age vertical, nice. five-ounce pours of straight Russian Imperial bourbon barrel age. We might be here all day on that one. I mean, and we might have to stay overnight. I, I Brains was about to say, the, the, the only thing we don't have here head. is a tent for you. I apologize. <laughs> I got one. I got home, one. So. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'll be Y-O-T. Mom. Well, but, be, but you can always come out to my property, man. I live down the road from here. Oh, so okay. you can, didn't you know. Can, oh, Fair, yeah. Okay. I live five Fair miles. Enough. Didn't know. Okay. Maybe I'll just run a shuttle bus, Kelsey. I'll run a shuttle bus to my house and back, and we can have people camp out. Hell so, yeah, yeah, that sounds like but no, that, that's how the darkest achievement really started. Was it tr- com- comes out of a love for a really good, intense dark beer, and also respecting. You know, you guys were talking about that on most, you know, Elmer's Porter. You know, they do teddy bear kisses, and I'm not going to knock it. I like it. I love what uh, the tap is doing. I love what Hoosier's doing. It's just I'm sitting there going, like, let's push it harder. Let's really see what we're doing with this stuff. And Might you know, well. um, we've got a. I kind of want to call it a Skunk Works project running right now. That stuff that's going to be even much longer term aged. Uh, we might start seeing that in 2024, maybe, but more to come on that even. But just it's a project. You heard it here first. Go ahead, y'all. More to yeah, come. Like, like hardcore, unique, random, rare barrels and stuff like that being aged with it. So yeah, interesting. But yeah, man. I so, mean. I mean, I mean, you got you. You all got to sip on some of the darkest achievement vanilla bean I've kept yes. back in the cellar. In the cellar, yes. it holds it up nice. I yes. might have some in my glass still. There we go. Really good. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, recently at Fleener Palooza, we had the Neapolitan. We first. did. Oh, there you go. And that held out really well. Yep. Uh, very. That's awesome. Pleasantly yeah. surprised. And yeah. the other thing that's fun is that we kind of rotate these variants every year. So we have a couple standbys like our vanilla bean, usually our coconut, usually our peanut butter, and then we have one that we just swap. And so the Neapolitan was last year's swap, the hazel, which was the hazelnut the year before. And the fun part is we truly sit there and we'll talk about what do we want to do this year? And we'll start talking with our nice. customers and with nice. our friends of, 
hey, what's trendy, what's cool, what have you, or even what haven't you seen that you'd like to see? Yeah. And let's do something fun. Let's yeah. do something I'd, I'd cool. like to see a smoked or a uh, pepper version. Of course you would. Of, that. of, of course I mean, you would. Come on. Now. Of course come on you would. So you're saying Mexican hot chocolate would not upset you? <gasps> I would I would highly recommend Mexican I would get down hot with chocolate. That. I would get down with that. Like Choco Vesa wouldn't have shit oh. on this. See, yeah. I was going to say, Soka I, Mesa, you know, though, is, Soka off a of stone. Oh, yeah. See, and I'm yep. sitting there. I'm like the most, I, you know, and I've got cellar, like a deep cellar. And I had the horrible stories of going to open up one of those things and having to go bad. I'm like, no, oh, I missed shit. it. It fell off. I but remember anyway. when that beer first came out in the big bombers, when they did the collaboration mm-hmm. yes, with the big old boys. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, mm-hmm. that was one of the better beers that I, I've ever had. But, uh, yeah, I think you guys should do a Mexican hot chocolate version. I was going to say, Kelsey would, Kelsey would not be against a pepper beer, I'm sure. We can do a pepper beer. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Well, we the, will the see deacon, what happens. The deacon might have um, just, I might have heard a bump on the table. I don't know. A little cayenne uh, pepper in that bad boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Brandon, one of the things that you told me earlier, like your Genesis story about how oh, you got into beer in yeah. your family and yeah. you know how you started home brewing. The, the very short version is, so my family's out of Italy, so we make wine. You learn how to make wine when you start at 12 years of age. Like, that's just a thing. You learn how to make the family wine. You said the family wine. That that struck me. It's like the house every wine. family. Every family. I didn't know this. I, well, not maybe not every and family. And it's not. It's not every family. But it's like you learn the techniques, you learn the tricks, and you know. And my my old man had been a winemaker for years on the side okay. for giggles. You know. But okay. It's like we learn how to do the tricks and the techniques and just the little nuance behind it. But so you learn that at about twelve years of age because also in an Italian family, about at that sort of age, it's a respectful thing. But you know, don't. I'm sure I'm going to get judged, but like. Once you hit 12, Sunday dinner is still a thing with your grandparents. And so you'd go to Sunday dinner, and you would have a glass of wine with Sunday dinner. You're not getting sloshed. You're not, you know, but it is a, it is a method to learn respect towards alcohol. Right. It's, it's still part of it. Kind of exactly. Like, right. it's, it's an awesome thing of, of like, hey, this is just an accent to your dinner. You know, this is something to enjoy with it. Yes, exactly. It's kind of how you compliment, you know, we use beer to compliment other, you know, courses and entrees. But that's the initial start. College-wise, it started really getting into beer, which is reverse. Most people start making beer and move to wine because wine takes a lot longer to make. I started making wine and I learned how to make beer. Uh, College-wise, it's because I figured out as a fairly hooligan youth that, hey, I can't buy beer underage, but I can damn well buy the ingredients to make beer make underage yep. and make it taste decent That's and right. a lot better than, you know, me paying the guy on the corner 20 bucks for a 12-er of, you know, Natty. So I would go and make a deal with local fraternity houses. Of I'd borrow their stove to let me cook the beer. They, I would give them half the batch. I'd keep half the batch. And that's how the arrangement would work. And so that's how I started doing it. it was like 19 years old, I think it was. Hell, I think that's yeah. what we call the American dream, I believe. God I, bless I, America. Sure. God, that's God right. bless America. <laughs> that's a but great story. That, that's really how I started doing it. And it's just been from then, it's, it was a very intense hobby. Um, Working through, you know, getting to get into the industry, getting to hear, you know, no other brewers, learn technique, learn different tricks and things like that. It's a lot of internal based research. Um, it fits in well with my other profession in the sciences. So that helps a lot of being able to sit there and go, okay, fermentation looks like this, formulation looks like that. How do we, you know, how do we do this and how do we incorporate it? So Right. Is this is this your first like professional brewing gig or if you Yes it is. Okay, awesome. Yep, so Very cool. yeah, it's my first professional. I started here kind of when I was on a third shift job and ended up just kind of getting integrated into the program. I kind of volunteered. I, I jokingly say I was like I just kind of fell into it. The lucky the lucky job of a guy who doesn't have to pay it for his hobby, but I started on here coming in here when I was third shifter after hours. I would come in here and give Bryce a hand because he was like, hey, what do you think of this? I'm like, it's good. But I was like, but can I give you an opinion? And uh, kudos to Bryce because he's like, well, yeah, man. He's like, what can we do to make this better? And that's how it really started. The, like, I, I mean this massive amounts of props to Bryce. He has such a good amount of hubris in the sense of he lets me do what I do from a process and from a recipe standpoint to help out for the brewery to let us do some of this. Sometimes, I mean, I'll be honest, I'll look at him and I'm like, hey, want to try this? And he's like, it sounds crazy, but okay, let, let, let's give it a shot. And so I'll say nine times out of ten, we're pretty good. But Yeah, for 100%, man. How did you, how did you and Bryce connect? I mean, how, what, how do y'all know each other? So I live up the road from here. Um, uh-huh. And one of the other funny stories is 
I hor- I, I've actually horseback ridden from my house to the brewery. What? And if that's not like, OG, like, I don't know what the so fuck like, it like, is. So, like, with a saddle, or you just, like, roll, like... He's I didn't not, ride a car, I'm, man. He, I, no, he's I'm not talking bareback. Oh no, no, no! I, I, I threw a set. Let me let me specify even more. Let me get even crazier. A Clydesdale, the big boy, the Budweiser. The, the, horses, d- no, right? no, no! He's not a Budweiser Clydesdale. He is a craft beer Clyde. That's what's the up. CBC baby. That's craft up. beer Clyde. Craft beer. You heard it first, y'all. So he, craft beer to, Clyde. To the, to the point where that boy, that big boy, gets a beer on his birthday, and I'm not even exaggerating. We take a picture every year, and he gets a craft beer on his birthday. He likes stout. No. Oh, that big boy. Uh, this year it was uh, Perrin's No Rule. Or, <gasps> I had that in years, man. And he's, uh, did he smash it? Oh, yeah. I mean, Dude. he's 2,200 pounds. He don't give a damn. 2,200 pounds. His dick is bigger than you are as a whole, <laughs> and he can drink more. It's bigger than, than your you, forearm. That's right. He can but, drink you under the table, dude. But any, but anyhow, no. Uh, he's a, <laughs> so we, were, we, had been, we found the winery around this area, and we would always horseback ride down here. And I just started shooting the shit with Bryce and getting to know him. And then at one point, he's like, oh, I'm going to open a brewery here. I'm like, oh, cool. So we just started talking, and I was like, and again, he was doing a good job, but he was very upfront and very humble about it. He's like, I only really learned how to do this from, you know, working at this other place in YouTube. And I'm like, can I give you some suggestions? Can I give you some ideas? Yeah, sure. So I started volunteering here for about six months, and finally he was like, i got to start paying you, man, because, like, you're here, like, 30 some hours a week after your other job. So I got to start paying you, man. So that's really how I fell into this. So Y'all once again, heard it. keeping it full circle, you have to want oh, yeah. it. 100%. You have to want that shit. Oh, yeah, you 100%. do. have to. 100%. And Kelsey can well attest to that. Well Kelsey played. can attest well to this, too. In this industry, you got. don't get me wrong, it does pay. But for the amount of effort and headache yep. and it's everything not else, glamorous. it don't pay that nope. great, kids. It's, it's the love. Yep. Oh, it's yeah. the love. It's the love. It's the dedication. It's the want. It's to want to actually get dirty and get the hop troop on your face. Come on now. Dusty. It's, you got to want that shit. Got to want it. Get it Bro- in your beard, boy. Get it in your beard. It's, right. good, it's good beard oil. That's you you <laughs> heard it right. here. You heard it here first on Mo Head, y'all. Motherfuckers rolling in on Clydesdales. Is it like riding a Mack truck? Um, I always say it's kind of like a Hummer. Because it's not a smooth, it's not 100%. a smooth ride, but not a damn thing is going to stop you from going through it. Please tell me you've ridden here with a glass of like beer or wine in your hand. Just. Um, no, but I have definitely had a flask of whiskey. Okay, that'll that'll. Oh, I was going to say I definitely, I Even definitely have, better. The the craziest story has to be the the Clydesdale. Oh, trail. it gets crazier than oh, you riding in on a Clydesdale. <laughs> in a, well, no, the, the like tangent to this is me being lost in a forest with some friends with a fifth with a fifth of wild turkey and us finishing the fifth as we're riding going i don't know where the hell we are but we're gonna get home somehow (laughs) you know what i mean i was like the horse will find its own home and food it will figure out where we're going but yeah so like i said crazy stuff anyhow when you ride clydesdales you live that life right god so i I have a i have a challenge for you for some time in your life to ride that motherfucker as hard as you can while holding a beer and not drop a single drop and at least drink half of it before you get here. Off radio, I will fel- I will tell you a fun story about that. There is Facts. a breed of there is a breed of horse that is. This meant- might be a palate cleanser. This there there palate is cleanser. a breed of horse that is meant to ride while drinking beer. <gasps> that is a palate cleanser. That is a palate. That's cleanser. a palate cleanser. But That's anyways, cleanser. I don't want to get too deep in so that. So we, we, we will we will get into that story. We'll we get will. into that. There's a, there's a there's a breed that has a specific motion that you can hold a beer glass. Solid while it's running at full open tilt, and that's a palate cleanser. Hell yeah! And chug the beer after, bro. We're wow. gonna talk about. We're gonna we circle were, we back to that. We're gonna talk about that. Yep. And, and my mom-in-law owns one. Oh, okay. so I was like, yes. all right, keeping it close. Keeping we, it yep, close. We will, we will circle but y'all back gonna to that. have to. Y'all gonna have to tune in for the extra shit for that's that. Right. But I wanna. I wanna circle back to Kelsey because yeah, she girl. just that's been got quiet. Up. I mean, the homegirl was over in. The motherland she just of beer. Traveled the she world. Was she was in the motherland of beer, drinking all kinds of beer, and she's, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. She's she got still half in this Stein guy, mode. But she got about half of this Stein That's knocked right. out, and I ain't help her. I ain't mad at her either. <laughs> it was fun. I didn't want to come back, but it was like, it was time to come back. Um, we started in Berlin, and then we went to. Well, what, was the, what was the genesis of this trip? Um, so we went with some brew dog folks that previous to the C word, we mm. had earned a trip 
Um, earned a trip. How do you yep. earn a trip? So, Free Dog is crowdfunded. Uh, equity, right? Yep, we're called yep. Equity Punks. punks. Yeah, yeah. And punks. punks. During the opening of that, where you can kind of like buy in your shares, you can refer people and they can use your code. Um, and you get points and, and you, like yeah, flyers you get points. points, right? Yeah. So basically, the top 10 earned a trip to the dog tap in Berlin. Okay. Which used to be a stone brewing location. No right. shit. There's actually a documentary okay. about that. Oh, yep. I didn't know. It's a very interesting. Gorgeous okay. location. It is. It's honestly it's one awesome. of my favorites. Um, so do you have to have a tattoo? Is that part of it too? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's a part. Calling her out. <laughs> Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Kevin and I actually ended up in the top ten. Because y'all got the tattoo. Yep. Because we got the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were the top ten in referrals. And oh, I believe that. We were supposed yeah. to go to Scotland, actually, in 2020, in April. And our trip got canceled like a week and a half before we were supposed to fly out. And then we were supposed to go to Berlin that October. And they just kind of, you know, because shit happens, they right, kept pushing the, it. And then finally we get an email and they're like, hey guys, we're going to make this happen and you all get like a plus one. So obviously like Kevin and I are each other's plus one, but everyone had a plus one. I think maybe except for two people. There were 18 of us that went to Berlin. Um, And we all met up. I got to meet people from all different, you know, areas that were a part of of the world or America. Yeah, of the world. Okay. Um, And we were all brew dog equity punks. And these are a lot of people that I've actually met before on a previous trip. So it was kind of like reconnecting with people after I haven't seen them for three and a half years. Um, And we just kind of toured around Berlin together. And we went into different breweries. And we went to different brew dogs. And we went to the dog tap. And we got a brewery tour. Um, The dog tap. The dog tap. That's the like what they call the big, big brew dogs where they actually have brew houses. Some of them are just like satellite tap rooms. And then some are like big... There's one in Australia, there's one in Berlin, there's one here in Columbus, Ohio. Their headquarters in Aberdeen, Scotland. Um, so we got the dog tap is like the big one. And it was gorgeous. It had great beer garden, um, fantastic GM. He showed us around, the brewmaster gave us a tour. Nice. Um, for me, it's like, once you tour one brew house, you've kind of toured them all, but okay. also everyone that does. That is the saying. Everyone walks you through it a little differently and also water is like the most important thing and it is not the same everywhere so we talked a lot about ro processes mm-hmm. um reverse osmosis mm-hmm. okay um and just the differences because scotland has such fantastic water just straight out of the ground mm. that is the only tap water that i will ever consume just out of the sink it's fantastic it is fantastic, but then you get to like you come here. What what about it? Well, I mean, what's the difference? So help 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 a brother out. What's what's the difference it's between just, pure, just clean? Well, it's it's it's, it's wh- minerals. It's mm. like okay, minerals and mineral filtration. Yep, it's okay. minerals, mineral, um, and then like here we have hard water, right? So there's we have to sh- basically strip that down and then Scaly rebuild it back. Scaly as a motherfucker. Yeah, it's and in Germany it's it's hard. It's like here it's hard water. Okay. So they have to do a lot. Like if you're wanting a beer to taste the same in two different countries, this one does it with just the pure water that they already have. And then you have to take water over here and kind of strip it down and make the profile the same. And water is one of the most important things when it comes to making a beer and making it consistently. If it's not the most important almost. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a little bit there and then we left and took off to Scotland for about five days and got you know pints and pints and pints and got scotland got we got scotland <laughs> yep. yeah y'all drinking like scottish <laughs> ales in scotland or, i mean what was scotland. Yeah. we had a lot of um we had a lot of cask beers i know oh, you guys had girl, asked me I'm earlier so about jealous. some i'm so jealous, jealous. <laughs> jelly, <laughs> about some jelly. smoked some roush beers mm. oh brother trent i just heard another bump on the table uh. <laughs> Man, I love him. He's rock hard. I love him. Uh, Kevin's I all am, like I'm hot rock, dog water. Yeah, bam, hard. bam. They're so good. <laughs> no, we had um, we had several beers at several pubs that we enjoyed in the atmosphere. It, just, it was just wild sitting in a, a pub that was like from the 1500s. 
Nice. It doesn't get really much better than that, in you my opinion. Fine. It also smelled like the 1500s. Well, as it should. But like, what, what does the 1500? <laughs> what does the 1500 <laughs> smell hey, like? You, you smell. can you cannot <laughs> describe that. That's a feeling. That's not a smell. That's a feeling. It is. You can't it's like just you describe can just that. smell the 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 age of the building, the history, the people who've been through it, and every yeah. step creaks. Yes. yes. It's just like yeah. Yeah. if you ripped up those boards off the floor, I don't know what you'd find, but it's just like that was my favorite thing. And the weather was perfect. It was nice. cozy. Mm-hmm. Um and just having like a really nice mug of beer to go with like a really nice soup was fantastic. A mug with a soup. So what was the yeah. soup? Okay, so I had colon skink. What the, what the fuck, fuck is, is colon skink? <laughs> colon skink is amazing. It's like a cream based stew with haddock and potatoes. Haddock. It's Interesting. Fish. Right. Sure. Interesting. So it's like a creamy, oh, fishy. Sure. Yeah, that makes starchy, sense. With yeah. haddock, it would be yeah, yeah. cream Listen, based. Yeah, that makes sense. Over there, when you're that close to like the North Sea, you've right. got to be eating seafood. You have on to. Yourself. Got like, to. You have you to. You can't get that in Indiana. I'm sorry. Right. You can Land you might get some corn locked. and soybeans, but other than that, locked. right? I'm I don't, not having I don't blame oysters you. in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. So it many was, stories. It was an experience. We Man. got kicked out of a of a of a bar. Please tell this in story. Scotland or please tell this story. Yeah. So I'm not going to say what brewery it was, but we were at a brewery in Berlin, and Berlin is... uh Thanks for hanging out, y'all. Yo, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Patreon. Patreon. Remember to enjoy responsibly. Take care of each other. And always, pour pour heavy. heavy.